All right, all right. Hey, Multiply Lake Norman, how we doing today? Man, we got a, we got a full house. And uh, what I love about having a full house is that I get to embarrass people. And uh, this is the first person that I'm going to embarrass. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is our service announcement. There's a red Ford Focus in the parking lot with your engine running. So <laughs> if, you, if you have a red Ford Focus, everybody give it up for Riley. <laughs> Zach Brock comes up to me during worship. He's one of our ushers because he serves. I'll let that settle. Let it hit you where you want it. Uh, but Zach serves as one of our ushers, and he came up to me. And uh, Zach's never come up to me during worship. So I'm thinking, something's really wrong right now. And he's, he leans in like he's going to tell me something. I'm like, oh, God, what happened? He's like, hey, there's a car running in the parking lot. Can you? <laughs> sure, yeah, I'll, I'll throw that out there. So we'll all make fun of Riley uh, when he comes back in as well. Uh, hey, a cu couple uh, of things that I got to talk about. Man, the first one is this. I have to talk about our men's retreat. If you were on the retreat, can y'all make some noise? Man, I I've got to talk about it. Listen, we had 55 guys come on our men's retreat, and it was absolutely life-changing. Uh, there were some people there that when they got there, they were like, I don't want to be here. My wife signed me up. Uh, <laughs> She paid for me without me knowing. That is a true story. That, that really did happen. But, but I'm, I'm, willing, I'm willing to bet um, that every single man that went on the trip was positively impacted. What I love this morning is this. I had somebody come up to me and goes, yeah, the name tag. Everybody make fun of Riley again. I told y'all we were going to do it. I uh, had somebody come up to me this morning, and, and they said, you know, when we first got there, we were putting on name tags. I thought, I thought the name tags were a little, and I'm paraphrasing here, I thought the name tag, tags were a little cheesy, but they worked. <laughs> like, you walk into church today, and I, what I loved is the lobby full of people calling each other by name. It, it wasn't just one of those awkward, like, I've been here for, for three months. Hey, how are you doing? You don't want to ask their name. Hey, how was your week? You start asking them everything about their family. Hey, how's your wife? How's your kids? And you don't even know their name, right? But, but now we have people calling each other by name. Uh, man, we shot, I mean, we shot probably 1,500 uh, 12 gauge rounds. Uh, we shot over 1,000 rounds of 9 millimeters. Um, we had 1,000 clays. Um, we probably hit 72 of them <laughs> out of the, uh, the 1,500 rounds. Uh, Man, we went, out, we went out and played golf. Uh, there were people that have never played golf in their entire life. And, and it's just fun to ride around and get to know people. Uh, but had fun doing that. We were very competitive. Uh, we we played, a lot of, played a lot of volleyball, uh, played some flag football, a lot of board games. It, it's funny, man. We were up really late, and then we were up really early. And, and, and what I told some individuals this morning, all that's fun, all that was great, but for me, the, the best moment or the most impactful moment every single year that we go on our men's retreat is we, we do one session when we're there. It, it's one session to kind of give vision. It, it's one session where I get to take the gloves off a little bit, uh, where I get to be a little scrappy. Those who are there kind of know what I'm talking about. Uh, but what I love is at the end of, at the end of that moment, we break off into to smaller groups and it's really kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing. And uh, you just get to look across the table and say, hey, how can I pray for you? And there's something about prayer that absolutely changes the trajectory of your spiritual walk. Man, I've already heard a few stories. I've heard four stories now of people that came up to me and said, hey, that was the first time I've ever prayed for someone out loud. It absolutely makes an impact. And I could talk about the men's retreat, I could talk about the women's retreat, but, but here's the reality. We're a church that believes in community, and we believe in family, and we believe when we have moments like that, it just doesn't just impact us in that moment or that weekend, but it impacts this church, it impacts our community. So I know Pastor Keith talked about groups a little earlier today. Here's my challenge, get involved in the church. And I'll go so far, I'm taking way too much time here because I wasn't planning on doing this, but I'll go so far to say this. Listen, if you don't find your place in this church, that's okay. This is my biggest prayer for everybody in the room. Find a church, plug in and get involved. Don't just be a consumer. I don't care where you go to church, but find a church that you feel likes family and plug in. Get involved. Serve. 
Serve your community and watch what God will do in and through you. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. That was like a mini sermon in and of itself. Uh, next thing I got to talk about, we have party with the pastors today. So party with the pastors, if you're new to the church, if you've never experienced party with the pastors, come right after church. I give a little vision, direction, tell you where we're going. And it's an opportunity for you to ask any question that you want to about who we are and the direction that we're going. One other thing before I make this announcement, I need everybody to pull out their phones. Everybody pull out your phone. I know y'all got them. I see you on them during service, all right? Like, y'all scrolling through Instagram. Y'all are like, oh, that's a good post from that pastor who lives four states away. Let me like that. I'm like, I'm right here preaching to you. Like, <laughs> okay, I thought it was a funny joke. But uh, I said, hold your phones for a second. Two more quick announcements. The first one is this. We have our party today for the Lees. Are the Lees I know I saw them here. Where are they? Can y'all stand up? It's weird seeing you over here. She, Nicole's in daycare. So Paul and Nicole... Man, they served for four years as our worship pastors, and uh, man, we have a big going away party for them that's going to be at the Rafferty's house. We intentionally did not put their address up there, all right? Your, their address is in your inbox, in your email, because we show this online, and I didn't want their, <laughs> their address like being plastered online. Last announcement that I have is this, and then we'll get rocking and rolling. Um, you have your phones, pull up your camera, all right? Everybody go ahead and scan this QR code. Like, seriously, scan it for me, please, because this is going to help us out. So, hey, this is what we're doing. If you can kind of look around the room, you can tell we're a little packed. We have our 1015 service that is, is absolutely packed. I know as we get more into the fall, more people start coming back from vacation. But this is what we need your help with. We're growing, and we're going to two services. We're going to go to two services. I'm saying this out loud from stage, uh, so we have to do this now, all right? This isn't... We, we've mentioned it before, but we're going to two services the week after Labor Day. Week after Labor Day. So there'll be two options, an 845 service and a 1015 service. All we're asking you to do is jot your name down and let us know which service you would prefer to come to so we can know how to plan, how to strategize, and how to keep growing. If you could do that, that would help us out a ton. So here we go. We're in week two of our symphony series. And last week, we talked about this idea or this concept that we find in Scripture of loving God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. But loving God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and all your strength. And we, we began to ask a few questions as we kicked off this series. What would your life look like if you could truly tune out all the noise and block out the distractions? Because I, I know for me, there's a lot of distractions in and around me. I talked about this last week when I was preaching. It's like, hey, I look out here. I have so much ADD. I want to talk, and I have to walk over here because they were asking each other about taking the picture and signing up. And I'm like, I can't listen to that because then I just want to respond. Hey, this is what you do. You take the pictures. But like, I, I'm easily distracted. Anybody else in the room easily distracted? Like so much so, Manny and I were playing pickleball this past Monday. Manny, I don't know if you remember this, but we're like actively in a game. And Stephanie, I'm going to call you out. Um, sorry. But I stopped to watch you and Sam play like as we're playing. I'm like, that's a good volley over there. Like they're getting out. Like I was distracted by y'all's game as I was playing. But, like I'm easily distracted. But what would it look like if we could truly tune out all the noise? I made this comment last week. I think that the superpower of the 21st century is going to be the ability to focus. And can we focus? Can we focus on the things that God has for us? Because some of us are really good at focusing on our job. Some of us are really good at focusing on our family. Some of us are really good at focusing on our physical health. Some of us are really good at focusing on our mental health. But, but what would it look like if we could really focus and dial in heart, mind, soul, and strength? To holistically focus. Mark chapter 12 there's a conversation going on with Jesus and, and these guys called Pharisees. And the Pharisees were like this religious group of the day. And these Pharisees are kind of impressed with what Jesus is saying, so much so that they want to try to catch him in a trap. And they say, Jesus, you're, you're teaching us all these stuff. You've given us all these commandments or all these rules and regulations to follow. And, and we, we get that. We get those Ten Commandments. And they say this trying to trap Jesus. They say, hey, Jesus... Which one is most important? Which one should we focus on the most? In verse 29, Jesus answers, The most important one is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And we broke that scripture down last week and we recognized the first part of, of that scripture is unique. Many of us, if you've grown up in the church, you, you've heard that verse, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. We can vibe with that. We get that. But go back to the beginning of the verse. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus, being in the flesh, is introducing humanity to the triune Godhead, to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We dove in a bit last week. Those three are not mutually exclusive. They have to go together. They can't be separated. And then we dove into the back end of the scripture. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. So, so if the triune Godhead can't be separated, then why do we try to separate our heart, our mind, our soul? I'm turning green this week. And our strength. Because what I can do is I, I can kind of start to focus on each component in my life but the problem is you can't separate them. They all work off each other. So strength, I had strength, whatever color it was. We'll call it blue because if I said green, it would be easy and ruin the illustration. But say strength was blue. And if I asked anyone to come up here and remove the blue water that I poured into this jug, I don't know if you could physically do it. Does anybody think they can do it? Because I can't. I haven't figured it out yet. But I think that was Jesus' purpose when he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These can't be separated. So what does that look like in our day-to-day -day life? We read last week and we, we kicked off talking about the heart. We read in Acts chapter 13, starting in verse 22, but God removed Saul and replaced him with David, a man about whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything that I want him to do. Scripture tells us that David was a man after God's own heart. Last week we dove a bit deeper. We recognized that David was a worshiper and a warrior. It meant he could kill a lion and a bear and a giant and he could be a, a manly man and he could work with his hands, but he could also sing and play the harp. Scripture tells us that he danced before the Lord so much so that he embarrassed his wife. Fellas, try not to embarrass your wife today when we go back into worship, all right? Some of you are like, I ain't dancing. But what would it look like if we were a worshiper and a warrior? What would it look like if we honored God with our heart? What was the thing that separated David? What set him apart? Scripture says the only thing that separated David from everyone else is he recognized when he sinned and he repented. We find that two places in Scripture. See, this is, this is what I know. You have to take care of your spiritual heart before you start to focus on the other areas of your life. But again... They can't be separated. So if we focus on our heart, then we have to focus on our mind, our soul, and our strength. And today I want to dig a bit deeper and I want to talk about strength. I want to talk about our physical body. If I had to subtitle this message something, I would ask this question. Can you carry what God has for you? Now, I'm not talking about spiritually caring. I'm not even talking about emotionally caring. Can you physically carry the call that God has for you? So to, again, today we're going to talk about strength. We're going to talk about our physical bodies. And some of you are like, are you freaking kidding me? We talk about that stuff in church? Well, well, yeah, but this is, let me tell you what this message is not. This message is not a ploy to get you to go to CrossFit. All right? <laughs> Don't worry. This message is not a ploy to get you to go to GFIT. It's another local gym. This message is not a ploy to get you to go to burn boot camp or F3 or anything else for that matter. This, this is not a message to condemn you. This is not a message to make you feel bad. What is this message? This message is a conversation that we should be having in the church, but we're not. There's too many pastors, there's too many churches that want to talk about everything that the Bible has to offer, but if that thing offends the pastor, then the pastor's not going to preach on it. Just because we don't agree with something in Scripture or don't fully understand it in our day-to-day -day life doesn't mean that we get to take a Sharpie and mark through it and act like it doesn't exist. We have to fully talk about 
Scripture. What is this message? This message is about preaching the fullness of the gospel. This message is about answering the yeah, but how questions that some of you might have. And you might be sitting there and you're like, saying, Zach, aren't, aren't you taking this a bit far? Like health and wellness, is that being the fullness of the gospel? Well, yeah, a- absolutely it is. For the skeptics in the room, let me approach it from a medical perspective first. Ha- has anybody ever heard uh, the terminology, you are what you eat? Any- anybody ever heard that? It sounds like something that we started saying when we started drinking almond milk and found out that avocados were a superfood, right? It's like, like, you are what you eat. But this was actually coined in 1826 by a French author who wrote this, tell me what you eat and I'll tell you what you are. Mark Heyman says this, the very fact that we are living a national or we are having a national conversation about what we should eat, that we are struggling with the question about what the best diet is, is symptomatic of how we have strayed from the natural conditions to give rise to our species from the simple act of eating real, whole, fresh food. He goes on to say this, the power of community to create health is far greater than any physician, clinic, or hospital. Every single year in America, 900,000 individuals die prematurely from the five leading causes of death. This is what research tells us. 20 to 40% of those could have been avoided by healthy life decisions. Let that sink in for just a moment. That means every single year, every year, 180 to 360,000 people die that could have avoided death by making healthy life choices. Nobody shout me down. Nobody wants to say amen to that. Nobody wants to. All right. I'm going to do what Pastor Doug did in our staff chapel and just go sit in the chair and say amen to myself. <laughs> and then get back up here. But, but 80, this is statistically, 80% of chronic disease is linked to inflammation, and inflammation is directly linked to our life choices. James Levine is a professor of medicine. He said this, sitting is more dangerous than smoking, kills more people than HIV, and is more treacherous than parachuting. We are sitting ourselves to death. The chair is out to kill us. And half the room is like, do I stand up right now? Like, I'm, <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? But, but here, here's the facts. My body is physically prepared when I take care of myself. If I sleep properly, I function better during the day. If I eat properly, I have more energy and can optimize the hours that I have. I had somebody come up to me this past weekend when we were on our men's retreat. I was up late, up early, you know, having a good time. They said, Zach, how do you have so much energy? Like, where is it, where is it coming from? I'm like, the Holy Spirit, and I try to take care of my body. Like, but I have to watch what I eat. I have to watch what I put in and fuel myself with. I have to watch how many hours I sleep because I promise you, we didn't sleep a lot over those two days. And I'm feeling it today. I was screaming a lot. I don't know if you could hear my voice. Like I'm straining right now. I'm not going to talk for three days after this. But we have to physically take care of our bodies. C- case in point is this. This past week before our men's retreat, I was, in, I was working out at the gym and, uh, and Darren w- was beside me. We were working out. Before the workout started, I thought to myself, man, I have not eaten enough food. I slept about four and a half hours last night. And I know I have not drank enough water or drank enough water today. Drinking. That's not English. Uh, I know I didn't drink enough water today. So this workout's not going to be good for me. First round in, I'm fine. Second round in, I'm okay. By the third round, I'm literally like doubled over thinking, dear Lord, take me now. <laughs> like I, w- I was smoked. But I, I didn't take care of my body. I didn't prepare myself for the workout. Uh, again, I wish I could separate this stuff. I, I wish it was easy. I wish I could just talk about my heart, my mind, and my soul. Because y'all are like, yeah, yeah, those are good. But when I start talking about strength in the physical body, it's like, oh, I don't, are you, are you sure you want to touch on that subject? I wish, I wish we could separate. I'm going to ask Michelle Norris to come up front. Where is she? She's in here somewhere. There she is. Y'all give it up for Michelle. Give it up, give it up. Go ahead and jump up on the, from the steps. Microphone is up there. They, they have it ready. Because um, I do this stuff part-time. She does this stuff full-time. So 
Michelle, this is what I'm going to, so you and I had a conversation earlier this week. So full disclosure, uh, Michelle is the one that gave me all the statistics. So if they're wrong, she's wrong. Um, <laughs> but, but Michelle does this stuff for a living. So Michelle, first off, two questions. Uh, how long have you been coming to the church and where do you serve? See what I did there again? It, it should be on. Mic check. Mic check, one, two. You have to turn it on. That's user error. You said, there you you said it was There you go. go. All right. Uh, so how long have you been guys been coming to church? Maybe a year. A year? I think and then so. where are you serving? Uh, I, on the media team. On the media team. There you yeah. go. She takes pictures. I'm the picture so, lady. Everybody's serving. All right. Shameless plug again. Right here. There you go. So we had this conversation this past week. And, and man, we were just talking about the importance of taking care of yourself mm-hmm. and, and how... Um, man, taking care of your body will prepare you to really carry the load throughout the day and that when people aren't taking care of their bodies, we're not able to do maybe fully what God has called us to do. That's right. um, so dive, in, dive into that conversation a bit. What would you tell everyone about wellness? Oh, how long do I get? Yeah, you get, you <laughs> you get two minutes. Tell me. Um, this is my job. So for any, anybody who doesn't know, I go into companies and I work with the employees and try and make them healthier. And then I work with a functional medicine practice in Davidson on an individual basis to help people on their wellness journey. And so it's something I'm super, super passionate about. And so if, if I had to say one thing is to just take yourself, take your health seriously. Mm. Um, we only get one body, right? We only get we only get one try at this, and so a lot of times I hear back, oh, it's really expensive to invest in your health. Gym membership is expensive. It's expensive to buy healthy food. Um, but you know what also is expensive? Come on. Medication and hospital bills and doctor's visits. I don't know how many of us, uh, I just had a baby, and that was really, <laughs> that was really expensive. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And so I, I really recommend just please invest in your health. Spend the extra dollar for you, for your kids. There's many families in the room that are raising kids. Those little bodies are growing and developing, and it's so easy to reach for the processed food and the processed junk to give them. But yeah. really, they need it more than we need it. Their little brains are developing, and I know it's so hard. Oh, they don't like that food. Just reach out to me, please. I want to help you. Yeah. I want to help us as a church raise healthy kiddos and help you guys on your wellness journey wherever you are. I am here to meet you. Absolutely. Hey, let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. Is anyone in the room too far gone no, to reverse no, their, their never, healthy decisions? Never. I wish we had this picture. So my, my grandpa, sorry. That's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> um, you do it. My grandfather's 89. And two years ago, well, about five years ago, he started to mentally decline. And there's a ton of research coming out about the Bredesen Protocol, which is essentially that we can help reverse or halt some of those symptoms of Alzheimer's and dementia wow. through the ketogenic diet. And so my, uh, I guess two years ago, so he was 87. There's uh, pictures of my grandfather and I going through Whole Foods, and I tried to retrain him on how he was eating and making these healthier choices, trying to stay away from the carbs and the sugar to help get the inflammation. At 87 years old. At 87 years old, out of his brain, so that he could hopefully halt some of those symptoms that he was experiencing um, through, yeah, with early. Anybody in the room over 87? (laughs) Raise your hand. Nobody's ever raised him. No excuses. All right. All right. And this, yeah. this, was, this was one other question because I felt like you are, are more equipped to answer this question. And I, I say that in jest, but I say that in full seriousness as well. Um, because we got on this conversation uh, of, of men versus women and how maybe they approach their, their wellness journey. What would you, as a female, say to all the ladies in the room? Okay, so this is why women end up in the chair across from me, is because we are so selfless. We put everybody else before us. Say it again. We are. We are. We are so selfless. We put everybody else before us. Mm. You put your kids before you. You put your parents before you. You put your husband before you. You put your church before you. All your volunteer, your work, everything comes before yourself. And we feel like it's a selfish thing to take an hour and a half to go to the gym, to spend the extra money to buy the organic meat or the berries or whatever food that we feel like we should maybe be eating, but actually I could spend that money to buy my kid new shoes or do something else for my family. And so that's why they end up in front of me is because they have served everyone else and they have nothing left. So to my women in the room, it is not selfish to invest in yourself. Come on. Okay. Think about it like that. You have to invest in yourself. Mm. You have to invest in yourself so that you can take care of all those people that need you. If you don't, 
then you can't serve those people and they too will end up in the chair across from me. And you don't want that, right? That's what's on your heart. You want to be able to take care of all those people. So switch how you think about investing in yourself. Come on. Think about it as a way to serve those that need you better. Yeah. Hey, y'all give it up for Michelle Norris. She'll be up here. You can just throw that back on the stand. She'll be back up here towards the end, towards the end of the service. Man, I, 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 hope, I hope you heard that. I hope that you, I hope that you felt that because like I said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and with all your strength. Can you physically carry the load that God is trying to give you? Let me, let me dive in and kind of clarify some of this. The more research that I do, the more I dive into the word of God, the more I realize how connected all of these components truly are. Think all the way back to Genesis one. So in Genesis chapter 1, God starts to create. And if you continue to read, eventually you get to the moment where God creates humanity. Listen, he could have created humanity in any form that he wanted to. He could have made us light. He could have made us vapor. He could have made us animals or trees or plants. But he decided and chose to give us a bodily form. So, so there has to be something to our humanity. There has to be something to our makeup. There has to be a reason. There has to be a significance behind our physical bodies. There has to be something behind our physical strength. Think back to our last series that we just came out of, our Living for More series. We discussed that we all have a divine design. We all have a unique gift inside of us. We all have physical attributes. A couple weeks ago, we talked about rebuilding the altar We saw that in the book of Ezra. And then in the book of Nehemiah, we we talked about rebuilding the walls. Fellas, we talked about it this past weekend. But this is what I know. Work takes action, and action takes moving your body. It takes your physical strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength, the physical body. So the body has to be important. Now, let me connect some dots for you. The body is so important that it was only Jesus' body that could satisfy the wrath of God. Let that sink in for just a moment. So humanity is fallen, right? Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve took the bite of the fruit, whatever it was, right? I was going to say apple. I don't think it was an apple. (laughs) But took the bite of this fruit, humanity fell, kicked out of the Garden of Eden, And then God's trying to maintain this relationship with humanity. He wants a relationship with you and me. So what does he do? The Bible tells us that he sent Jesus in what? His bodily form. Lived a perfect life. And it was his humanity. It was his bodily form. It was his strength that was nailed to the cross for my sins and for your sins to satisfy the wrath of God, to satisfy humanity turning from Jesus. That's how important the body is. Again, I'll ask, your, I'll ask the question, is your body prepared to carry the call that God has for you? Because Jesus' body was prepared to carry the call that God had for him. Why am I so passionate about this stuff? Man, I'm passionate because my dad and my grandfather both passed away way too early. My dad passed away when he was 52. My grandfather passed away when he was 61. If you're, if you're 52 or older in the room, I want you to stand up. 52 or older. That, like, this is that's wild to me. But both my dad and my grandfather passed away way too young. Y'all can go ahead and sit down. Now, he, here's the truth. Here's the reality of that situation. They were part of that 20 to 40% that if they would have changed their lifestyle, they might not have died as early as they did. Can you carry the load that God has for you? Say, Zach, all right, I get it. Like, you want us to be healthy, but get to the Bible. (laughs) Some of y'all are like, you're skeptical because you're like, "Where, where is it in Scripture? Well, let me, give you, let me give you two instances. Here's the first one, Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 18. Some men took a man who was not able to move what? His body. 
to Jesus. He was carried on a bed. They looked for a way to take the man into the house where Jesus was, but they could not find a way to take him in because there were so many people. They made a hole in the roof over where Jesus stood. Then they let the bed with the sick man on it down before Jesus. When Jesus saw their fate, he said to the man, friend, your sins are forgiven. There were four individuals that knew about this quadriplegic that couldn't walk, physically could not move. They knew that Jesus could heal people. So what did they do? They said, we got to get this man to Jesus and maybe Jesus can heal him. Not only did Jesus heal him physically, but he healed him spiritually. Go on to read the story. The man gets up and he walks out the door. So this is what I need. I need four people from this section. I need the four, I need four, just four people. Um, come on, Cooper, one, two, three, four. All right. No, let, Bryson, get up here. You're coming too. We'll make it five. All right, come on on stage. Come on on stage. Y'all jump up here. Y'all are young, so I don't have to worry about y'all hurting yourself. I've got to worry about me hurting myself in this moment. All right, so this is what I want to do. All right, y'all pick me up. Pick me up. Oh, dear Lord. Okay. All right. Give it up for these guys. All right, let me down slow. Slow. Slower. Slow. Slow, slow, slow. Okay. All right, I need three of y'all to go sit down. Three of No, Bryson, you stay up here. That's two of you. One more. Cooper, go sit down. Yeah, Cooper, go sit down. I think Cooper could ruin the illustration because he can pick me up by himself. All right, y'all two pick me up. Pick me up. Oh, oh, give it up. Give it up. All right, let me down slow. Slower. All right, one of y'all go sit down. Bryson, stay up here. <laughs> Bryson, pick me up. Come on, Bryson. Come on. Oh, come on, Bryson. Y'all cheer for Bryson. Cheer him on. Come on, Bryson. Don't stand over me like that. Stand on this side. All right, pick me up. All right, y'all give it up for Bryson one time. Bryson, good job. Go sit down. Give it up for Bryson. <laughs> Bryson's like, dang it, it was cool when five of us were up here. But, but sometimes it takes our physical acts to get people to Jesus. Can you carry the load that God has for you? You're like, all right, Zach, I see what you did there. I, I see what you did. Well, let me show you another scripture. What about Daniel? Daniel chapter 1. Let me give you some, some background. Jerusalem is attacked. The king orders, excuse me, for individuals to be brought into the court. And the purpose of them being brought into the court was to learn the language, to learn the literature, and to learn the ways of the Babylonians. And the king went so far to say, hey, listen, we're even going to assign them the food that they eat. We're going to give them the food from my table. We're going to give them the drink from my table. So you go on and read the story, and you hear about four individuals that stuck out. It was Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And some of y'all are like, I recognize Daniel. I don't recognize the other three. So the other three, that was their Hebrew names, but when they were brought into captivity, they were given the name Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So you have Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these four men decided that they did not want to defile themselves with royal food and wine. One commentary says this, there are many reasons why these four didn't want to eat certain food. Thus, Daniel and his friends determined to do nothing that would in interfere with their physical, mental, and spiritual development. All your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Even Daniel recognized that these four can't be separated from one another. His heart was right. His heart was in line with God. We talked about that last week. I don't care about the other, the other three if your heart isn't aligned with God. But once your heart is aligned with God, we have to begin to move towards the other three. And then what we see in the book of Daniel is that Daniel recognized that his bodily form honored God. So you go on 
to read. So for 10 days, the chief official let them eat whatever they wanted. Y'all, we got the choice. You've got the choice to treat your body however you want to. Daniel just decided to do it differently than the other group that was brought in to the royal court. And in verse 15, we read this. This is scripture, all right? We're back in the Bible. This isn't Zach Witt making something up. This isn't medical advice. This is biblical. Verse 15, at the end of the 10 days, the four looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. All your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Again, at any point during this series, as I'm talking, if you can figure out how to get the blue back out and put the blue back in one of these containers, please come show us how. But what I'm finding is this, you can't separate these things. So if I'm going to preach the fullness of the Bible, if I'm going to preach on sexual morality, if I'm going to preach on the fruits of the Spirit, if I'm going to preach on Ephesians 4 and our gift set, If I'm going to preach on tithe, if I'm going to preach on everything, love, joy, grace, peace, forgiveness, if I'm going to preach on all of that stuff, then I've got to preach the fullness of the Bible. Don't be mad at me. I didn't write the thing. I'm just telling you what it says. So what would it, what would it look like? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, Paul's writing. And there's some people responding to him, and and their response is this: I have the right to do anything. And Paul says back, but not everything is beneficial. And some of their responses is, I have the right to do anything. You're right. You got the right to do anything you want to. You got the right to live your life however you want to. Paul says this, but I will not be mastered by anything. My question to us today is, are you allowing your physical health to master you? and keep you away from carrying the load that God has for you. A couple weeks back, I told us, be strong in work. Got to rebuild the altar. Got to rebuild the walls. Takes us using our hands. Takes us using our bodies. Can you rebuild? It takes physical attributes. But here's the good thing. Today it can stop. Michelle said, nobody's too far gone. Hear me, I'm not, I'm not telling you how you should work out or how you should eat or how much you should sleep. But what I am saying is this, we have to be aware of our physical body because it is part of being holistic. It's part of following Jesus. I can point back to the water all that I want. Still haven't figured out how to separate it because it can't be separated. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Zach, that's easy for you. No, the heck it's not. Working, hey, Working out is not easy for me. But that's why I've put people in my life to hold me accountable to taking care of my body. If I don't go to the gym for a few days, outside of traveling, I will get a text from somebody at the gym saying, hey, where you been? Are you okay? A couple, about a month, about a month ago, it's almost been a month. Um, man, I felt, kind of felt convicted about how I was eating. Like I, and, and the problem is, like, I know the sermons that I'm going to preach like a couple weeks in advance. I was like, crap, I'm going to preach on this stuff, and I'm already feeling convicted because I'm convicting myself. But I've had to cut some things out of my diet because of the way that I was feeling. Here's the thing. I have the choice. Some of you are like, man, my back hurts. My knees hurt. I always got a migraine. I can't sit down and talk to that person right now because my head's hurting. I'm like, yeah, because you've, you've probably had 64 ounces of coffee, three Mountain Dews, and you haven't had any water in 72 hours. But what if that conversation could impact that person for the rest of their life? What if you could introduce them to Jesus? Zach, you're taking this too far. I don't think I am. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Who are you surrounding yourself with? We say this all the time here at this church. We're not going to talk about it be about it. Hey, so if I could get Zach and Brandy and Walt and Michelle to come back up. Can I get you four? We'll wrap this thing up pretty quick. Just line up front. Y'all give it up for these four. Scoot on down, scoot on down, scoot on down. Brandy, slide on down for me. Come stand next to Walt. Is, it, is your real name Walter? 
It is? Yeah. I'm calling you Walter from now on. Zachary. Come on, you can slide on in, Zach. So, so this is what I've asked, this is what I've asked these guys. And y'all can go ahead and put that QR code up there. I'm gonna end very practical. Like if I, listen, if I'm gonna pour into you spiritually, if I'm gonna pour into you holistically, heart, mind, soul, and strength, I've got to give you opportunity. I've got to give you a path. I'm not just gonna stand up here and go, hey, y'all go figure it out. But but this is the beautiful thing. These four people up here, one thing I know about all four of these individuals is that they're passionate about people. The other thing I know about all of these four individuals is that they're really passionate about health and wellness. So I've asked them if, if they could, I'm going to ask you one question. If, if there was one word of encouragement, not one word, if you could give people, if you could give our congregation, our body, our family, some encouragement today when it comes to fitness, what's well, like one, one phrase, one sentence that you would say to everyone out there? There you go. Uh, yeah, I would just tell everybody to just show up. You know, I think uh, we can always find a reason not to do something, not to go there. You know, 90% of the battle is just getting up and going. Yeah. You know, so just show up to wherever you want to go to get healthier and to take that first step. So, uh, hey, so let me ask you, uh, along with that, what time do you work out every day? 5 a.m. 5 a.m. Some of y'all are like, I ain't ever touching 5 a.m. <laughs> I ain't even getting up to go to the bathroom at 5 a.m. <laughs> do you have we'll to give work you out? A, we'll give you a free drink if you come up. Free drink, free, free coffee, free caffeine if you come. Free, free coffee. There you go. Look, but let me ask you this. Do you have to work, not you in, as an individual, but for the people out here, do you have to go work out at 5 a.m. to do fitness? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you do not. There you go. All right, pa pass it to Michelle. Michelle, if you could give one word of encouragement outside of what you've already said, what would it be? Stop researching the next diet that you're going to do, and I want you to start thinking about food. What should I eat? I'm going to walk over here because some of y'all just got offended. What? <laughs> Think about food. What should you eat? What God made for you to eat. Okay, and you're going to, someone's going to say, oh, well, somebody invented Oreos, and God created that person, and therefore I should eat Oreos. <laughs> no. Our bodies are biologically designed. Bernie's raising her hand. Our bodies are biologically designed to eat what the earth provides for us. And so stop thinking about what diet you should do and just start thinking about food, what food comes from the earth, and that's what I should eat. Wow. All right, Brandy. Brandy, what would you say? Um, well, if you don't know me, I run the Spark program at 926. Yep. So that's me. Um, I would say whatever program you want to do, just try it out. Um, so a lot of people have this misconception that you have to reach a fitness level before you try out a gym or whatever fitness program you wow. want to do. You do not. We will meet you where you are, exactly where you are. Okay, so I have people that have never worked out a day in their life, and I have people that have worked out for years. So we'll meet you where you are, and we'll help hold you accountable and support you. So just let us do that for you. Yeah, wow. Y'all get up for Brandy. Hey, Walt. So, yes, Zachary. Uh, uh, Walter. Hey, Walter. So I know we, we've talked a lot about CrossFit, 926, stuff like that. Tell us, give me like a little bit about GFIT, who you guys are, and maybe how it's a little different from, from CrossFit and from Spark. Okay, my name is Wal Walter. There you go. Um, my brother and I own a company called Govea Fitness or GFIT. We do interval training, so we do hour workout classes, um, boxing intervals and things like that. Um, we have people from super in shape to just starting out, so like they're saying, there's no excuses, but uh, when we came up here, we we're talking about, um, all right, what are we gonna say? So mine was health is wealth, you know what I mean? So they already crushed all that already during the whole sermon. But what came to me was in Proverbs uh, 27, 17, it talks about as one person sharpens another, I'm sorry, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So yeah. we all need someone. You're not doing it by yourself. We all have a community. I think it's best if you can know someone who's on the same path as you or you can pick someone up and help each other out. Um, you guys got to sharpen each other and help each other through that journey. So uh, hold yourself accountable. Come on. I love it. I love it. Hey, so this is what I've asked these guys to do kind of as we close. If I could get Zach and Michelle to, to go this way, Brandy and Walter to go that way. Hey, th this is how committed we are as a church for this. Um, I, I know, Zach, I'm going to kind of tell what you and Jake, I mean, you said you guys said that you would give a free month to anybody that wants to join or try out uh, CrossFit. This is also what we're doing. If anybody wants to go to GFIT, you got a month free too. We're going to cover it. We're, I think we're covering it for you. 
he, and, and you're like, Zach, can you, can you do that? Yeah, like I can, but, but this is the why. Because I truly believe the more you take care of yourself, the more you can take care of others. So if we want to be a church that's going to take care of our community, then we have to start internally. We've got to start with our heart, and then we've got to start with our physical bodies. We're not just going to talk about it. We're going to be about it. So here's the deal. As we close today, it's going to be a little different. Again, QR code's up there. Scan it if you would like to. These four are staying up here. If you scan that QR code, we're going to break that out and give names to each of these individuals. And you can sign up for a 10, basically by scanning the QR code. You're signing up for like a 10 to 15 minute conversation with one of these four. And they can help you take your next steps. Listen, maybe your next step is getting up and, and just walking a mile. Maybe your next step is changing your diet a little bit. But I know that all of our next steps is just being a better version of ourselves physically. So listen, I hope you enjoy today. We're going to continue this series. We're going to love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength so that we can truly love Jesus and change the world. We'll see you guys next week at 1015. Thanks for joining us today at Multiply Church. We can't wait to see you again next week, either in person or online, as we continue to love Jesus and change the world.